Hi everyone, and you're very welcome to today's briefing session on the ASHRAE SIBSI Ireland Mentorship Programme 21-22. Uh, my name is Daniel Coakley and I'll, I'll be hosting uh, or chairing today's session. Um, so just to give a, an overview of the agenda for today, um, I'll start with an introduction to ASHRAE and the Irish chapter of ASHRAE. I'll pass over to uh, Michael Curran then, who is uh, chairperson for SIBSI Ireland. Um, and finally, we'll have a, a brief intro from our sponsors, CIM, um, before moving into the main topic for today, which is the, uh, the mentorship program. Um, and that discussion will be led by uh, my colleagues, uh, Connor Murray, Connor Dean, and uh, Ryan Loney, uh, representing both ASHRAE and SIBSI Ireland. Um, and there's an opportunity throughout uh, to ask questions or give your feedback. So, so please, I'd encourage you to do that as well. So just um, before I get into the introduction, um, if you've joined any of our previous webinars, you'll be familiar with the, the setup um, of the GoToWebinar system. But if you have questions, just use the questions tab uh, and you can submit your, your questions by text. You can also raise your hand if you would like to be unmuted when we get to the panel discussion later on. Um, and if you're having any difficulty or you want to follow up afterwards, uh, you can always email us as well at the email address provided. Um, you'll find that as well, there's some handouts. The, the slides for today's session are in the handouts tab uh, on the right-hand side of your screen, I believe. Um, and they'll also be made available later on, on our website. And finally, when we close the session, you'll be presented with a survey uh, just asking for some follow-up feedback on today's session and about the programme in general. So we'd really appreciate it if you'd take a couple of minutes to fill that in. So I'll, I'll start with um, an introduction to ASHRAE for those of you who aren't members or aren't familiar with what ASHRAE does. Um, as I said, there's, there's quite a few slides here. I'm not going to go through them all in detail. I just want to take a couple of minutes just to kind of give a flavour of what, what ASHRAE does. So ASHRAE is a, an international organization uh, representing about 56,000 uh, members worldwide from 132 countries. Uh, the mission is to serve humanity by advancing the arts and sciences of heating, ventilation, air conditioning, refrigeration, and their allied fields. Um, and the vision is, is basically a healthy and sustainable built environment for all. Um, just a bit about membership of ASHRAE. So the, um, as a, as a Paying member of ASHRAE, you get access to quite a, a large range of, of materials and um, technical content. Um, for the, the, the most recent society year, so the 2020-21 year, um, the options for member benefits changed to provide members access to um, a number of different options, including e-learning courses or PDF copies of ASHRAE standards or handbooks, uh, which are a core part of um, the uh, information provided by ASHRAE. Um, so ASHRAE, it, we're quite recent in having an ASHRAE chapter in Ireland. We, we've set up in about, in 2017, we were inaugurated as, a, as a, an official chapter. But you can see that there's 199 chapters globally, um, predominantly in the, the US where ASHRAE was, was, was founded, but now um, this, this chapter is in uh, 132 countries, as I said, worldwide. Uh, we also have memorandums of understanding with a range of other professional organizations, including including SIBSI, who we have a, a close relationship with. Um, and I think Michael will, will touch on that later when we, when we uh, pass over to his presentation. Um, if you're a member, you subscribe to our newsletter or social media, you'll have seen um, that ASHRAE recently opened or officially opened its uh, new headquarters, which was a, a large renovation uh, of a, an existing building built in 1978. Um, that's located in, in Atlanta, Georgia, in the US. Um, and there's some interesting uh, presentations on the design challenges and the um, um, the, the story behind that that project on the website if you're if you're interested in finding out more. Um, so really, I suppose the the, the core um, part of what ASHRAE does is it, it provides research standards and, and publications. Um, you may be familiar with the ASHRAE handbooks, uh, which are a kind of go-to guide for um, 
for our industry for um, a range of, of topics, including uh, fundamentals, refrigeration applications and systems and equipment. There's also a number of standards. I've just highlighted a couple of the most prominent ones here, um, such as standard 55, which covers thermal and environmental conditions for human occupancy. There's a number of other standards covering ventilation, energy efficiency, uh, building communication protocols and, and many more. Um, and then finally, the ASHRAE journals. So if you remember, you get this uh, ASHRAE journal on a monthly basis, which includes um, interesting topics around our, our field and, and uh, a lot of technical content uh, that's quite useful. Um, and recently, ASHRAE have shifted a lot of the content to an online portal, which is, which is a fantastic way of, of being able to search through the entire back catalogue of, of ASHRAE's uh, technical resources. So that's available through the ASHRAE technology portal uh, and you can access that at the, the link on the slide. So I think that includes all previous journal articles, research reports, conferences um, and even handbook chapters. Um, I won't dwell on this but there's, there, there was quite a lot of work done um, during COVID-19 by uh, volunteers in ASHRAE globally um, and there's a, an excellent resource page covering all of the, the content that was put out during the pandemic on ashrae.org forward slash COVID-19 um, and within the within the Irish chapter we also held a number of webinars um, uh, covering a, a variety of topics and actually we had uh, Michael as uh, one of the, one of the speakers at the at the early stages of that um, webinar series and there's other links on the slide if you're interested in, in getting access to the other material that's available. Um, if you're interested in getting a bit more involved in, in the, um, I suppose, the, the technical content in, in ASHRAE, you can join any of the technical committees. Um, I think there's about 92 technical committees covering uh, a wide range of aspects, including um, you know, from fundamentals of design through to data centers, pharmaceuticals, uh, communication protocols, smart grid, etc. Um, and you can join any of those. Uh, you can apply to be a member and you'll be immediately added as a corresponding member. And if you want to get involved, then you can, you can join meetings and uh, participate that way. Um, yeah, just, uh, I suppose, just a point on, on research, Ashri, is the, the backbone, I suppose, of, of ASHRAE is its, uh, its research work. Um, it raises about two million every year to go towards uh, research and topics that are pertinent for our industry. Um, and uh, that's, that's donated to, um, to fund research at, at different universities, companies and technical research institutes. Um, and also helps to fund, sorry, some of the society scholarships um, and, and funding that goes into uh, Young Engineers in ASHRAE, which, is, which covers this, uh, this mentorship program as well. Um, on professional development, there's a range of courses available from ASHRAE, from e-learning, uh, on-demand courses, uh, ASHRAE Learning Institute instructor-led courses, and also uh, certifications for um, for a range of um, uh, certificates related to building design performance and building operations. Um, there's two, also two um, main international, I suppose, conferences that ASHRAE host every year, the, the winter and the summer conference. The, the upcoming ones are the 2022 winter conference in Las Vegas, which also includes the AHR, the Heating and Refrigeration Expo, um, that's attended by a, a huge number of companies uh, presenting uh, at that expo and also the uh, summer conference which uh, will be held in Toronto, uh, Canada next year. And you may have seen that as part of this mentorship program we're offering um, a sponsored travel to attend this uh, summer conference next year for, uh, for the top um, participant in the program. So just very briefly before I hand over to Michael, just to, to cover on the, the um, young engineers in ASHRAE. Um, currently, YEA members or young engineers and ASHRAE members have been growing steadily over the last couple of years and now represent about 20% of membership in, in ASHRAE globally. Um, and it's under this umbrella that we're interested in um, 
in launching this mentorship program. Um, so the YEA, uh, under the, the, the criteria set out by Ashray, and I believe it's the same for SIBSI as, as members up to the age of 35. Um, and you can find out more just on the activities of YEA on the ashray.org forward slash YEA website. It's quite a number of programs that ASHRAE run uh, to benefit or focused on the benefit of, of young engineering members in ASHRAE. Um, and mentorship is just one of those things. There's also a number of programs covering um, leadership development, uh, scholarships, and, and many other um, aspects that may be of interest. So I'll, I'll skip over some of these slides um, just in the interest of time. Um, and you can, you can always find out more on the, on the website. So lastly, just on the, the Ireland chapter of ASHRAE, this is our uh, current board for the 2021-22 uh, Society Year of ASHRAE. Um, you can see all of our details on the board section of our website and, and contact any of us if you're, if you're interested in, um, in finding out more about what we do. Uh, we also run a, a number of technical events throughout the year. Uh, this is just a list of the events that were held over the last 12 months. Um, those are all now available on our YouTube channel or on our, on our website as well. Um, so here's just the links to keep in touch with our chapter, the uh, very social media channels that we run, including Twitter, LinkedIn, and our mailing list, which you can register for on our website. Um, so finally, just before I hand over to Michael, just a, a word of thanks to all of our sponsors and supporters who have been um, uh, instrumental in, in making our work possible over the last uh, couple of years, uh, and we're really grateful to the support that they provide. So I'm going to hand over now to Michael Kern, uh, Chairperson for SIBC Ireland. Um, so just make you presenter, Michael. Can you see this? Perfect. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Great. Okay. Thanks. Um, thanks very much, Daniel, for the introduction, and also thanks for the warm welcome to take part in the, the mentorship program. Uh, first, I'd like to thank uh, Connor Dean and Connor Murray as well for all the work that was put in, because it's a, it's an excellent opportunity for, um, I suppose, the, both the mentees and the mentors. Uh, also, our own Sipsi Ireland uh, Yen Chair Ryan Looney for his work uh, with Connor. And again, like with all events like this, uh, Paul Walsh for sponsoring the, 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 the events and also the, the program and also becoming a, a mentor as well. So um, I always get asked, what, what's a building service engineer? And um, I try to explain it very simply. I've, I've tried a few different ways, but uh, I, I like this one the best because it's, um, and it's, read it out for you. It's imagine yourself in the most fabulous building in the world. They take away the lighting, heating, ventilation, the lifts, escalators, and acoustics, common power supply and energy management systems, security and safety systems. All you're left with is a cold, dark, uninhabitable shell. So that's what building service engineers do. So we're bringing buildings to life. And um, okay, it's a bit of a mouthful to explain to people, but I think we do bring buildings to life and we're underestimated some of the times. My own feeling is in the last couple of years and even more recently with uh, COVID, uh, building service engineers, engineers, whether refrigeration, ventilation, or electrical, are coming to the forefront. And uh, on a more recent visit to the, the Children's Hospital with the, the SIPC committee, um, if anyone ever gets a chance, uh, take a look around it. Uh, and there's a great video as well that was produced with Jones and uh, Arabs and uh, our, ourselves on, the, the, I suppose, the life of a, an engineer on the project. And it's, a, it's an excellent resource that I'm delighted with uh, the, the way it's turned out. And again, thanks to Ryan for pushing that forward as, as the end chair. Um, I suppose summary of SIPSI, so the full title is the Chartered Institute of Building Service Engineers. SIPSI Ireland is a region within the SIPSI uh, family. And there's 900 members in Ireland at all different uh, grades. And uh, there's 20,000 members worldwide, 90 countries throughout the world. Um, in Ireland, we have a very active committee and we have involved with our statutory panels and our standard bodies. And the other side as well is um, I just want to pass on wishes uh, from Kevin Kelly, who's actually uh, was a lecturer in DIT, now retired a bit, but he's actually president of SIBSI Worldwide. And I was meeting with him last week and he asked me to pass on the congratulations to the committee that's put this together. 
and any support that SIBSI can give, um, he'd be delighted to uh, attend any meetings or briefings. So again, a collaboration and joint events. We collaborate, as, as Daniel said, with the this Ireland chapter, whether through Yen or through other events, or even taking part in some of the, the, the adventures going on there. We do a lot with Engineers Ireland and uh, REI. We presented recently at the recent conference on uh, BIM and also on ventilation. Uh, and two enjoyable uh, lecture series was well attended, so we were happy with that. But we also do a lot of stuff with the government. Um, SIBSI, as mentioned, I think it's 97 times uh, within the, the building regulations and the codes. And uh, more recently, again, we've been advising on ventilation more than yourselves at ASHRAE. We, um, there was documents issued out, and again, a lot of collaboration between ASHRAE, SIBSI, Riva, BISRA, and VESA in the UK. So it's it's a collaborative, um, it was joint effort to get all these committees together. We're also involved with the NSEI panels, and uh, Paul Martin within SIBSI has been on a number of panels to do with uh, heat pumps, but also non-domestic um, fabric, fabric upgrades, etc. And we are involved with SEI in a number of different ventures at the minute. As such, one is uh, we've a working group on heat pumps for non-domestic buildings and how they work in through a pathways project. So there is quite a lot of collaboration with different, and also with universities and. I think I'm actually presenting at the uh, NUI Galway Ashri event on the 9th of December. So looking forward to that on how, as my own daily job with NUI Galway, um, on reducing our energy. I suppose SIPS as well, different groups. Uh, we have the Daylight Energy Performance Facilities Management, Young Energy Performance Group, Intelligent Buildings, HVAC Systems, Building Simulation and Homes for the Future. So quite a lot of those groups, once you're a member, you can join any of those groups and get any of the information or advice or even take part in some of the presentations, etc. CPD is important no more than ASHRAE and Engineers Ireland. Uh, CPD events are held quite regularly with the through the magazine or also through the SIPSI guides, technical memorandums. They've come to the fore now with the COVID. Um, in the last year, I think we've issued five on ventilation and it's been updated all the time and there's a new they brought it again. I think they're looking at a new version coming out maybe January with more updates. And uh, but also upgrading is a new document that came out recently on uh, TM65 embodied carbon and, and mechanical electrical services for buildings. So the, weekly there's updates on uh, technical number and space of commissioning codes, codes of practice, there's research insight, SSL light and publications and uh, application manuals and digital engineering. Digital engineering now is uh, they revamped themselves and there's a new program coming out for those guys. So it's worth just linking in uh, with that. So again, the the link uh, between SIBSI and Ashery uh, was formulated again with another uh, meeting back in the 15th of December in 2020, where there was a strategic partnership agreement with Ashery. So Ashery actually do have uh, as part of the SIBSI website do have their own portion where they have um, information on membership and uh, working together. So as a member of SIBSI, you can join ASHRAE through mutual agreement or ASHRAE through SIBSI. And uh, there is a roadmap set out there. So again, a lot of things, the, Stuart, Fer Stuart McKenzie, who was the, the um, SIBSI, uh, I suppose, the, the main representative, he came through and as I say, the comment was with a practical commitment to work together on activities that serve the respect memberships and the wider public and promote a more sustainable world. I, I think it's a it's a great marriage because um, a lot of the stuff is similar and uh, the experience for both SIPSI and ASHRAE, it can only benefit both institutions growing going forward. So I just want to talk uh, for a few minutes on the chartered member grade. So again, as I say, uh, the ASHRAE member can become a member of SIPSI. And this is the route that you can go down to become a chartered member of uh, SIPSI. So those is part of this, um, the mentorship. The option is there. If you are, a, as I say, ASHRAE member or a SIPSI member, you can follow this route to, to become chartered. So the work of the MSIPSI is characterized by the ability to develop appropriate solutions to engineering problems using new or existing technologies through innovation, creativity, and change. So as part of that, you'll develop and apply new technologies, promote advanced designs and methods of design, introduce new and more efficient production techniques, market and construction concepts, pioneer new engineering services and management methods. So eligibility for MSIPSI requires you to be engaged in technical and commercial leadership 
and possess effective interpersonal skills. You will exhibit a personal and professional commitment to society, to your profession and to the environment. So as I say, there's 17 criteria for um, MCBC or ACBC. So those criteria are broken down into five sections. So A is use combination of general specialist engineering knowledge and understanding to optimize the application of existing emerging technology. B, apply appropriate theoretical and practical methods to analyze and solution of engineering problems. C, provide technical commercial leadership, demonstrate effective personal skills and demonstrate a personal commitment to professional standards, recognize the obligation to society, the press and the environment. Um, currently in the UK, there is a review of the title of professional engineer, um, and there may be some changes to these competencies, but um, they're all laid out there on the on the website through SIPSI, and you can go through each of the, the portions for that. Um, I think as a plan going forward for uh, the mentees is that, you know, if you're looking at the chartered engineer uh, focus as part of this, it may be useful to go through those objectives and set out with your mentors some of the programs. And again, SIPSI Ireland will associate, will, will come forward and help you with whatever you need to do in terms of uh, any more learning associated with that. Um, we're looking at, um, as part of this group, offering, a, I suppose, an introduction to membership of SIPSI. Uh, on Thursday the 20th for all the, the mentees as part of this. And um, if anyone is interested, they could just uh, contact us. There's an email address coming up in a minute. And we basically through the whole process of membership and how you can um, avail of the different channels that SIPSI offer in terms of the, as I went before, about groups and sectors. Uh, and we can go through that. Um, I suppose what, what I want to sort of bring forward as part of where I, my journey, um, I became a member of SIPSI when I was a student at the Liverpool University. Uh, I was doing the Green Building Services there, and I graduated in 1996. And at the time, there, there wasn't very many jobs in building services, but I decided to move back home from Liverpool, and uh, I, I joined a small practice. There was only um, three engineers in the practice in, in Galway, and that was a company called Hebe Kenny Associates. And from I suppose the start of my journey right through to when I finished before I moved in I Galway, I had two good mentors within the company. One was Eddie Heavey and the other was John Carr. And the enthusiasm and the ability to learn from your, your mentors is immense. They're in, they've been in the industry, they know the industry, they know the right people to talk to, they know where your guidance should be going in terms of how you, you, you basically become a professional person. So I think Anyone that's on this journey, you should be um, really, um, I suppose, take in as much of the information you can. And, you know, the, the mentors are there. They will give you advice. They will give you steering. And don't be afraid to ask questions of them or even ask if, if, if you feel that you need to look at some other part of the, the structure. You know, we, we can deal with that as well. And as I say, if anyone has any questions about SIPSI or if anyone wants to basically, I don't know, just shoot the breeze, just send us an email there to sipsyardenchair at gmail.com and uh, I wish everyone on the journey for the next year the best of luck and uh, again best wishes from Kevin Kelly president of Sipsy uh, so that's my section so thank you very much thanks Michael um, so I'll just pass over to Paul uh, if you want to say a couple of words for a few minutes and then I'll um, hand over to uh, Connors to, to take you on the mentorship yeah, thanks, Dan. Uh, and I don't have any slides uh, to, to to show, but I just want to, I suppose, express our gratitude um, for <clears throat> signing us up as a sponsor uh, for the mentorship program. We're delighted to be involved. Um, CIM, just a, a really quick overview of what we do. We're a software company and we help people operate large, complex buildings at their peak performance and that delivers an economic and uh, an environmental benefit. And it, it, it aligns perfectly with what, what a lot of Dan and Michael up, uh, outlined there around the, the HVAC side of the house. That's specifically where we deploy our data analytics solution. Um, the software picks up when plant and equipment is not operating efficiently. And then we have a team of HVAC engineers who are ex BSE engineers or uh, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, mechatronic engineers. So our company is, is about 50 people. Um, it was set up by my brother David originally in Australia uh, four years ago, five years ago. And he focused primarily on commercial real estate. Uh, so big complex office blocks, 
and uh, shopping centers and airports in Australia. And then two years ago, I set up the European um, division of CIM and we pivoted and focused on high-tech manufacturing clients because a big portion of their energy consumption is consumed on HVAC, whether it's trying to maintain specific conditions in a clean room type environment or you know just a, a just a, a kind of a controlled environment for manufacturing and and doing that as, as energy efficiently as possible and what we found is that there's a big demand for our technology in that sector because a lot of the clients we work with are focused on manufacturing equipment and driving oee on you know injection molding machines or, or milling machines but oftentimes the opportunity for optimization in the hvac space is not giving given the priority it, it, it sometimes needs and we can get um, step changes in demand side energy consumption by optimizing what clients have you know getting big chillers and big boilers and big air handling units and big fan coil units to to operate the way they were originally commissioned or the way they were originally designed and using software to identify how to achieve that and then the collaboration between the software and the, the on-site technicians is where our engineers come in. And as I say, it dovetails perfectly, being involved in this mentorship program, it dovetails perfectly for us because we feel that you know, technology is now providing insights and visibility that BSC engineers or that you know, uh, on-site technicians didn't have before because sometimes there were proprietary systems or there were legacy systems and there was data residing in silos. What a good analytics solution does is unlocks that data and again it just helps the role of a BSE uh, or anyone technically involved in opera optimizing the um, the way a building runs. So anyway in summary delighted to be involved looking forward to uh, sharing any insights we can from I, I'm qualified 25 engineer 25 years as an engineer and I did an MBA along the way as well. And there's, there's a lot of engineers who work on our team that are are, are, are chomping at the bit to, to help uh, any any graduates or any young engineers uh, on their on their career journey. So thanks, Dan, and thanks, Michael. Thanks very much, Paul, and and um, and thanks for yourself for for being a mentor first of all, and and to CIM for sponsoring this program. Um, and also just want to, to acknowledge uh, Aoife and, and Kleena who were doing a lot of work behind the scenes for uh, some of the marketing support as well. So uh, really uh, huge thanks to, to you and your team. So I'll, I'll pass over to um, uh, to Connor Murray and and Co for the intro to the mentorship program. Um, so let me know when you can see my screen. Yep. You might go on to the next slide there, Daniel. So, hi everyone. Um, we're now at one o'clock, so perfect timing. So we've got one hour left. And I suppose what we'd like to do, that's what I'm now gonna call you. I've now christened Connor Dean as Connor Jr. So you'll know me as Connor Senior, and I've got Connor Jr. Okay, you can see from this, the young face of Connor and Connor Senior here. Um, I'm out in industry probably since the late 70s having started working for GE in Ireland on a graduate development program. So I've been a mentee and a mentor. So that's why I'm, as the incoming president of ASHRAE next year, I'm delighted to be involved in this program. So I'd like to start by welcoming you all and repeating the welcome on behalf of Michael on SIBSI and Ryan Loney on the YEA equivalent in SIBSI and Connor Dean, Connor Jr. as I call him now, on the YEA for ASHRAE. <clears throat> so let me start off by simply saying that, first of all, thanks to Paul and CIM, because this is great, the sponsorship is really important, because as a mentee, in my view, there was there was only a few things I was interested in, and a few things I didn't have. One of them was I didn't have money, and I wasn't able to travel, so sponsors become very important. So the idea of the prize of going to Toronto next year is just one example, is great. So that's a nice start as an input. So again, you will notice on the dashboard on the GoToWebinar, there are three handouts. One Daniel has gone through from an Ashray introduction, one Michael has gone through for SIBSI, and the third one is the mentorship program, which is what I'm going through now. So make sure you have that open beside you if you can, because the intention here for the next hour is not to laboriously go through every line of every bullet point of every slide, so you'll notice that you should be able to read the first one. So if you go on to the second one, Daniel, if you wouldn't mind the next slide, please, right? 
we're getting into the objective. So we're trying to do this to allow us and I and myself and probably Peter O'Dowd, I'll just stick to Peter and myself, would be the most elder lemony of us having graduated um, well before most of you were born. And in my case, I graduated in 1978. I think, Peter, you've beaten me by, by a short period, maybe. But we're all in industry a very, very long period of time, and we want to give back something. And we also remember what it was like when we were young. So if you read the last bullet point, what advice would you give to your younger self? So when you're young as a young engineer, you're coming out, you have all sorts of pressures on your life, including what am I going to do? What career path do I want to go in? Um, as Michael, you said, building services is a very, very broad area. I came out originally as an electrical engineer, kind of electrical electronics at a UCD, but I worked in manufacturing in GE as a process engineer. So most of my background is a process engineer. But I had lots of choices in my early years of what to do. And I did an MIA, MIE like an MBA. And you get lots of choices as an engineer. And that's the one thing an engineer gives you. It gives you a key to any possible career in any different direction that you choose to do so, because the training is a very, very methodical training in how to uh, develop a skill set in science. So we're about trying to help mentees navigate the difficult years of either relationships, jobs, where to live, where to work, how to progress a career. And I'm delighted that it's com in combination with both Sibsi and Ashray and Michael has shown the chartered membership route as part of professional development. So the first thing is important to say here that this is about supporting mentees grow their careers. It is not in conflict with any other program of any company. It is designed to add to it and give a personal touch. So next slide, please. So the first thing about a mentor and a mentee, the ideal position is a one-to-one -one relationship. And when I first came out of college, I had a mentor that kept an eye on me. I still know him today, and that's 40 years later. I've been a mentor where I've done one-on-one -on -one or a number, and I know those two or three individuals personally, you know, 20 years later. So this is a very long-term uh, relationship. but in the program we're setting up now, we're really concentrating on the first year to see how it gets off the ground, how it grows, right? So it's both structured and unstructured. The unstructured part is about how we can help you. A, an ear to a lending ear, a sounding board, um, and a chat on a very confidential basis. So that's the first thing that I would say. These are confidential discussions, right? And then there's the structured group sessions, which where we do it together separately on training and development and supporting other CPD programs. Again, Connor, Ryan and Michael, please step in or any of the other mentors come in at any stage and add a bit to this, but we will get through this fairly quickly in the next few minutes and then we'll open it out. Okay, so next slide, please. So you can see on the left side, you've mentees, mentors on the right side giving an idea of the type of, of uh, profiling in each of those cases, right? So Connor, I'm gonna let Connor Jr. You can talk a bit about the mentees and that will give us a change from listening to me all the time. Do you wanna jump, <laughs> jump in there or Ryan? Yeah, yeah. Um, hi guys, you're very welcome to today's webinar. Um, as the guys were saying, my name's Connor Dean and I'm the YA Chair of ASHRAE for 2021-22. Um, also known as Connor Jr. in this mentorship program. And I suppose I'm on the other end of the scale from Connor. I'm, I'm just starting out in my career. And it, it's it's wonderful to see this thing develop because I think maybe two or three months ago, this was just a discussion. And I, I can only talk from my own experience in the early stages of my own career. You know, us as young young engineers, we're often faced with with problems, decisions, you kind of lost a little bit lost at times and you know i found myself um you know looking for answers to, which i didn't have and and this is the program i think you know which is required for for, for us younger engineers um so so essentially what what we're trying to do here is is match younger engineers with you know experienced as as connor would say elder lemons um who have a couple of more years experience uh, than ourselves. Um, so the mentees, I suppose, uh, range from an age bracket of, of 18 to 35. 
and this qualifies within ASHRAE and SIBSI uh, young engineers. Uh, the status is currently employed or, or seeking employment in an engineering profession. Um, the location uh, is living in, or working in, in Ireland and we will accept applications from those living outside of Ireland if there is a valid connection. So um, Connor will mention about the application process and, and we're not, um, we're, we're, we're open to all scenarios, let's say. So the membership currently open to all individuals uh, regardless of membership, but as Dan and, and Michael kind of alluded to, we, we hope to, to get you on board as members of, of, organize, of both organizations. Um, I suppose the qualities we're looking for, and I suppose everyone on the call ha has these um, from applications we reviewed already, is, is highly motivated and self-determined individuals. Um, it's the same with anything, what you put into it is what you get out. And look, we're, we're hoping to run this uh, throughout the year and next year. A lot of this, as Connor mentioned, is unstructured. So it would be um, kind of meetings and get catch-ups with your mentor, maybe a text, maybe a phone call. So we're hoping to let this grow organically. So so I suppose that's from the, the mentees side. Um, we also have nine mentors as it stands. And Connor, I suppose you can take take the guys through the, the mentors and the range of backgrounds. <clears throat> okay, so we'll probably um, go through this later in a few minutes, but I'm hoping you've all downloaded the mentorship program briefing document that's on the dashboard and you can already have a look at it to see what interests align you. Again, our intention now is this is not a lecture, this is a collaborative session where we're trying to share the good news that we're trying to connect mentees and mentors and describe the program. So um, on the mentor side, you'll notice that the, the mentees is between 18 and 35. And if you look at the mentors, it's kind of loosely 25 to 65. So some of us are on the other end of the scale mm -hmm. and others in the mentor program are the early end of the scale. And that's <laughs> simply because they have significant experience. Like it's a bit like data mining, that a bit like what Paul, you were talking about there, but it's where you've got a an engineer that's been what I call a deep dive. When I did some work at Intel, the big American phrase, a deep dive, like a silo. So you've somebody that's been embedded in a particular narrow industry and have a huge amount of experience in a particular area can give you support in that area. And you don't have to be like myself, get to being an elder lemon before we believe you can do it. But when I first did my first mentorship program, I started that over 25 years ago. So I would have been in my 40s when I was a first mentor. So you don't have to be an elder lemon completely, but it does help the more experience you have. And it's about opening doors. And I think, Michael, you may have touched on that in your discussion earlier on. From a SIPSI side, it's about opening doors. Like I know somebody <clears throat> and I say, I need you to give my mentee some time. Can you set something up for him? Why should you do this for me? Because I'm asking you to, because I know you for 25 years, do it for me as a personal favor. And that's what me mentors can do, right? As well as we can be a sounding board for you as a mentee when you decide somebody has annoyed you and you get really upset and instead of roaring and shouting at work you roar and shout at me i listen to you and then i say have you calmed down now i see you're upset bloody hell i'm upset and this is why i'm upset etc etc and we'll get it out of your system and then say now here's what you do and i always say get them in the long grass don't don't expose yourself don't lose your your cool right? Take a chill pill, relax. It's not the end of the world. Put it in context, etc. So next slide, please. So this is more again, you know, question for you. Mm -hmm. Are you a recent graduate? The mentor, we're looking, we will develop more and more mentors as time goes on. You know, have you got experiences? Do you want to give something back to the industry? Do you yourself want to add something in your own charts, your program? So it's a, it's a mix of both of those. And we will get an opportunity in the next few minutes to have a number of the other panelists who are mentors to talk about their experiences. And hopefully we'll open it out to some potential mentees in the audience where and attendees where you can talk about what you'd like out of the program. This is very much a collaborative program and will grow organically. So next slide, please. 
Now, here is just one as an example. Well, as the man said, we're all in it for the money. Well, here's something for the mentees. This is a trip that you may not otherwise have any aspiration towards, is that the ASHRAE annual conference in 2022 is in Toronto. Okay, and uh, Paul and David and C CIM are going to be very generous in providing a, um, a not to be missed trip for one lucky mentee to go to this. And as the program develops over the years, hopefully we'll have more of these treats, whether they're to SIBSI or ASHRAE, or to other conferences that make sense with mentors and mentees on it, right? But that's just to give an idea, this is something that makes it worthwhile. When I was a mentor many years ago, I used to take my mentee for lunch and buy him lunch. I would meet him for a drink at times. And I always picked up the tab, right? Because the mentee never had any money, right? When I was growing up as a mentee, at a young family, mortgages, all sorts of draws on my money, I never had any money. It was always nice to have somebody buying me a meal or buying me a drink, even if it was only a cup of coffee and a, a nice shot of croissant. So, next slide, please. So, what are the next steps? Well, today, we're at today, the 25th. There's a link to the applications. We'd like to, to look at the applications and alignments between now and the end of December. And then really probably started programming in, in 2022. But it's not to stop us that we may find good linkages between mentors and mentees that occur between now and Christmas, and that won't stop those discussions carrying on. I noticed, Michael, you've talked about having an event in the next few weeks yourself. So this will be grow organically as required. And then we'll start looking at the following up scheduling meetings into the new year. Again, you can read on what's on the screen. So. Um, unless, Michael, you want to come in or Ryan on some of your side in SIBSI, I think that takes us through the main part of the, of the program before we get into the mentors and some of the bios that are on the, that are in the handout. So do you want to make, come oh, in on this, hiya, Michael? Hi, Connor. Sorry, I just wanted to come in just for a brief moment and just Please. talk about the SIBSI yen. So I know a lot of people are familiar with Ashley and, and they might be familiar yeah. with SIBSI, with but um, that we have a, a yen or a YEA, it's it's known in ASHRAE. So the YEA is the Young Engineers Association. And then SIBSI, we have a Young Engineers Network. And and the idea for, for a lot of people on the, on the line there, it's it's sort of an entry level way rather than going, it might be slightly intimidating to go directly to ASHRAE or SIBSI, but we have a sort of an, an entry level association. And, and over the last um, year, um, and I know Michael touched on it, we, we've, We've collaborated quite well with uh, with Ashray and and their equivalent, which will be Connor, who, uh, who will be forever more known as Connor Junior. So we <laughs> yes. we had a quiz yes. earlier in the year and, and it worked worked quite well. So we collaborated, and um, but it, the the Yen Association is just a bit more informal and, and we kind of have a bit of flexibility to for a, a more kind of broad ranging event. So we've had go karting. Um, and we did a virtual tour then of the, the children's hospital earlier in the year, which uh, some of you may or may have not seen. So that's just a bit of background there. And what I will say is we're always looking for new members and, and new ideas. So if anyone wants to get involved, feel free to just drop a mail or, or whatever, and uh, we'd be happy to, to get you involved. And then just on, on my own mentoring uh, experiences, I, I graduated in, in 2013 and I was quite fortunate I went working for a company, JV Tierney, and I worked with um, Cormac Carl and Paul Douglas, who were who were quite quite good at um, uh, sort of fulfilling that role of mentor. And I know when Michael touched on it earlier on on the call about building services, and, and there is quite a lot of ground to cover. So I, ha I have a quite a useful quote here. And I know um, it's an Albert Einstein quote, so I know he's probably not just turning in his grave or probably spinning in it when I when I read this out, but it says, I don't need to know everything. I just need to know where I can find it. So that's what mentors help us with. It's how to find the information. And um, like I say, there's just an awful lot of ground to cover when you come into an industry and you have to, you have to find various things, but that's where a mentor can be a huge benefit to you. Um, so I'll hand it back over to you, Connor, because I think it's your bios coming up now. Yeah, but I, well, you know, I mean, I, I think Ryan, this is exactly this is a collaboration program we're talking about yeah. today. So it's really kind of a myself and Connor Jr. purely from the Ashray side, and it's yourself and Michael coming in on the Sibsi side. But you're absolutely right. 
there is a networking aspect to this. So you don't need to come in on board as a mentee now. This is going to carry on for, for in my view, forever, because I think it's the right thing to do. And so come in as a YEN member in SIBSI or a YEA in ASHRAE, get involved. You're not on your own as a young engineer in this area. Develop a lot of friendships out of I, this. I, see, I think for a lot of people, Connor, it's almost a bit like completing a circle because like you were saying, you had a mentor when, when you started off in, I can't recall, 72. And and now you're. Oh, you're hold on a minute. I'm not at that old. Wait a minute now, Ryan. I might be Connor Senior. I'm not, I'm not a crinkly elder lemon. I'm just an elder lemon at the moment, right? But if you go into the next slide there, Danny, maybe that might be a correct uh, 1978 I came out in, right? But yes. No, you're right. Carry on. Carry on, right? I can be called older. I'm only getting, I'm getting older as opposed to old, is the way I phrase things at my stage in life. So carry on, Connor, you're, you're right. Uh, Ryan, sorry. You're right in this area that between yourself and um, between Ryan and Connor Jr., this needs yeah. to be driven by mentees. That's yeah. why, you know, this has been led by you guys, because we're here as the older versions of you guys to help you in your careers as you grow, because the future of any society, including the world, and I'm a big believer in the fact that we're custodians on this planet. We're not the owners of this planet. And we've huge challenges in climate change and decarbonization. And I think both Ashray and Sibzi will play a major role within this. But we need to allow you guys to be able to live comfortably in the planet in the future. And I have four, five grandchildren coming next year, and I'm thinking about the future. So we, that's where we're doing it because we need to do it. So over to you guys. Yeah, ju just on that, Connor, just where I'll pick up where I left off there. So from the mentee side and next steps, I suppose, the last side is is essentially we're looking for you to put in application. And many of you have done this already, essentially putting in your, your in key interests um, and background. And then we're, we're asking you just to, to write a, a short description of, of why you want to join the program. Um, and these applications will be reviewed. Um, We'll, we'll look at them and therefore we'll, we'll match uh, with, with your mentor. And I suppose that comes on nicely to the next couple of slides because we have a couple of mentors on the line today and starting with Connor. Um, we'll just go through a couple of the mentors. They can give an introduction. They can give their experience as being a mentee slash mentor. And I'd also say, if there's any questions, just pop them into the chat. And, and as Connor said, this is an open discussion um, and uh, we'll read out your questions to the mentors. So, so Connor. Yeah, what maybe the easiest thing, Daniel, is you go through the slides. I mean, you can read mine, so you can come back to mine. If you go through them to those that are on the panel, I noticed that if, I, if I'm right, the next up on the, on the mentor bios is Gary O'Sullivan, who's actually on a panelist on the line. So without yeah, right, putting right, you on the spot, Gary, you might want to just come in as your slide comes up and just chat away. Thanks, Karen. Um, yeah, how's everyone? Um, look, I'm a building service engineer by trade. I'm a member of uh, SIBSI, ASHRAE, and um, Engineers Ireland. Um, I sit on the Board of Governors of ASHRAE and on the Vice Chair of the Education and Training Committee. So the reason I wanted to join as a mentor is an engineer. I don't know everything, but I know enough people that do. Um, and I have been in a position where, as a young engineer, not knowing where to turn, projects going wrong, not having the support or someone to look, what do I do here? Or where where can I fix it? Or who do I, who do I go to? And that's the reason I'm here, just to, I suppose, if I can guide someone along the way, that's, yeah, I suppose that's all I'm trying to do. So. Super. Okay. So maybe I think okay. Gavin is up next. <coughs> Hey, how's it going? Uh, my name's Gavin. Uh, currently working for Excite uh, Engineering, and I'm currently working on a semiconductor fab. Um, I'm just doing this because I never had a mentor like everyone else, I suppose, uh, when I was starting off. And again, it's a lonely place to find yourself. And I want to give back, and I think that's the best way forward to keep uh, young engineers engaged and interested, and not just uh, scared. And, uh, and that's kind of it, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Gavin. No, that's great. Yeah, okay. short, short and sweet. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I think we've John Smith off next. John, do you want to put your spoke in? Yeah. 
Hey folks, so as mentioned, my name is John Smith, so I'm probably, if there's another John here, I'd probably be given the, the title of junior as well. I'm one of the, the younger uh, mentors here who is uh, looking to come along as uh, either a mentor or even a mentee to try and learn from some of the other people here. But I'm open to offer experience, especially to maybe some of the younger mentees that might be involved here, those looking at graduate programs or early on in their career. Cause it's something that I do have more experience in and it might just be a little bit more recent uh, than some of our other mentors. So I'll be able to offer insights into areas like that. And I have particular insight, especially from trying to work and just maybe doing a master's and balancing different work-life uh, objects and stuff like that. And my interest also, I did a, a degree in energy engineering, um, which focused maybe a bit on production side stuff, but moved into more building services design and just getting into excellent like areas interested in. So, happy to talk to different people on you know how you might be able to move your career towards what you're interested in and, and working out on that those types of things and I, as shown there you can see it inside in bios when you're looking at out that uh, interest in energy efficiency and sustainability so anyone in, on those kind of lines as well I'd be happy to reach out and talk to anyone so thanks guys super that's great John okay good okay so I think Kate you're up next you're on on mute Kate <laughs> I know I do it all the time. I talk to myself. Uh, number one, I probably need a mentor in uh, teaching me how to use this bloody computer. <laughs> uh, okay, we can hear you now. <laughs> good stuff. Um, as I was saying, um, Kate Carell is my name. Um, by, I suppose, degree or trade, I'm an energy and electrical um, engineer. Um, did um, energy systems engineering above in Galway. Now, I wouldn't say I'm an elder lemon. I'm still kind of on the, on the fresher side of things. Um, so I'm only in my career, I'd say six going on seven years now, but I suppose the main thing that I could offer is my kind of like no bullshit approach and kind of like as in just getting straight to the point and kind of looking for what you actually need to get. Like that saying, like as in you don't need to know every everything, you just need to know the places to go and get them. So I suppose I'm kind of that kind of person that will approach anyone for you and help you kind of like cut all the crap and kind of get to the point of where you need to get to. Um, I suppose in terms of interest and um, experience, I'm 100% on the kind of climate action side of things, energy efficiency, sustainability, and more so on the kind of smart grid kind of side of things. So obviously the electrical engineer is kind of um, my main aspect. I probably differ from the guys here today, but um, I suppose I'd kind of bring a kind of a bit of a spark or a bit of a kind of a different approach to things as well. So happy to help anyone who um, is interested in reaching out. Great, Kate. Thank you very much. You do realise that on one of the slides we 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 loosened the age entry point for a mentor <laughs> down to twenty five. So you're so I, I wouldn't use the word elder lemon for you slight at all at all. So you're you're safe. But I mean, you're coming in from the from from your side of your experience, and that's a, probably an interesting angle. You can either have lots and lots of experience um, over being an elder lemon like myself. Or you can come in an area where you're in the mid-range journey, but you're still able to mentor. So this is a very flexible system. But the bottom line is about helping young engineers in their careers. And you don't have to be in your 20s to be a young engineer either. You might find that you come into engineering slightly later, or you may be in a rut in a particular area and you want to move, you want to check where you should go and you need some guidance. So there's many, many reasons for where you would want to join. And, and the most important one is we're here to help and I think this is what we're really trying to do. So if we were to move on now, we've probably two more mentors showing in the slides here and that would be um, Paul, if you wanted just a quick chat about your side. I know you gave some as part of your CIM sponsor introduction. You might, And then we'll fill it, we might finish with the, um, with uh, probably the another elder lemon like myself, as in Peter O'Dell, but maybe Paul, you might start first, okay? Yeah, thanks, uh, Connor. The, the, I suppose my, desire in in helping junior engineers was would be just to help articulate how to navigate um people really uh, and that's the, the as i say the, the when i graduated the energy and efficiency and, and efficiency um uh lecturing wasn't a big thing so i've picked that type of stuff up over the way and over the years and i'm sure the newer graduates would be able to tell me more than i probably know but just in terms of how to navigate people and how to coach them through maybe um, situations where they need to engage um, a coalition of the willing and, and help get projects over the line by, by people engagement, maybe it's where I can add a bit of value to anyone. 
and specifically on, on building optimization and maybe I can help talk to those two angles as well. But looking forward to helping anyone that's interested. Thank you. Paul, thank you very much. Okay, so Peter, over to you, my friend. Hi folks, uh, Peter Rodout here, yeah. How long have you got, yeah? Uh, talk about Elder Lemon. Um, I started my career, uh, well, not in the previous century, the previous millennium, as we'll say, with a company called J.A. Kenny and Partners, and I got a job there as a, a junior draftsman, and um, went to college in Bolton Street uh, at night and for a couple of years, and did the city and guilds, and from then, um, prior to that, uh, what's it called the CIBSE, or it was called the IHVE, uh, uh, qualification was you know I had to go to London to to to, to do that. So uh, I was lucky to start the course in Bolton Street around that time, the early seventies, and um, have to pay tribute to the late Owen Kenny who uh, put me through college for the two years to do the uh, building services course in Bolton Street. It was a great opportunity to, and I'm forever grateful to him for that. Um, I spent some time in Kenny's afterwards, and I qualified and. Uh, we decided then to go to Africa for a couple of years, four years in fact. And um, it's something from a personal point of view was fantastic, but from a, a career point of view, uh, wasn't really great because uh, I know when I come back and people ask me uh, where I'd been, uh, they weren't really interested in hiring me because they didn't see it as a great career move. So just be careful. But from a personal point of view, very good, but from a career point of view, it wasn't, uh, <laughs> it wasn't very beneficial. Um, after after going back and maybe spending another year or two with Kenny's, I um, joined Jacobs Engineering and I spent over 20 years with Jacobs. Um, so it was a very uh, eventful, I suppose, time. We, we, we graduated from drawing boards, as people may remember, uh, to um, 3D over that period of time. I had a lot of very good engineers working there. I had, we, we, Jacobs grew over that time. From about uh, six in the mechanical department to um, over fifty, when, when you know at, at peak, and we were involved in some of the most you know technologically advanced plants in the in the in the world. In fact, like Intel and large pharmaceutical facilities and all that. Yeah, so that's uh, I'm I'm currently retired happily, uh, doing some work in the community with the, the sustainable energy community in in Nakhayan and uh, trying to keep myself busy. Um, I suppose I would like to have had the luxury of having a mentor, but uh, I didn't and I would sort of value the concept because uh, it can be a lonely place at times. You think there's no to turn and you know, the old cliche, a problem shared is a problem halved and all that. Um, so I would be delighted to help in any way I could. Thank you. Lovely, Peter, thank you very much. It's nice that we started off with an elder lemon and we finished with a crinkly elder lemon, right? That's it, yeah. And just to tell me your story about CAD and drawing boards and stuff. Uh, I, I remember um, when I first started in um, in UCD in engineering in 1974, we had to bring and buy a certain kit with us. I had to walk in and go off and buy a slide ruler, which I arrived in on the first day in, in October um, 78, or sorry, 74. And they then said, oh, you can use a calculator. And I had already bought a 50-step programmable Texas Instrument calculator as a as a prize for myself when I graduated. Um, at the, I'm sorry, when I came out of school, I should say, before I went into engineering. And I always laughed at the fact that I I had the slide rule. I still don't know how to use a slide ruler today, and I and I think it's so in some drawer in the house somewhere. But but I certainly knew how to use a programmable calculator. When, when I was in, but coming out of school at that time. So again, I think that gives the breadth of where it's on. Uh, Daniel, would you can I, can I stop you there, Connor? Start, can I stop there for a moment? Daniel? No, well done. Would really you like to see a slide room? I have no <laughs> idea what it is. I don't know what Which one Which I learned like. to use uh, in college. There you are, I've just got out of the drawer. <clears throat> Very well, and well you know something I would say about the slide room. The one thing it taught me was, the, the one thing a slide room taught me, and I remember you know, mentoring a young engineers working for me was that, when you have a, you know, you should have some idea of the, the concept of what you're dealing with, whether it's, uh, you know, you could be out by a factor of 10 sometimes with computerized calculations and everything else. And the one thing with the slide rule was you had to have a great, a fair idea of what the actual answer was, you know, you get down to the next decimal point, but it was a very good um, guide to have a, an approximate idea of what the outcome should be. So it taught me a few lessons in that regard there. 
and, uh, <laughs> at some point, but not in the public domain, I'll share with you where I made a huge error just for that reason as a process engineer in GE, as a young engineer, buying the wrong yeah. size of stuff because I didn't understand the difference between centimeters and millimeters. So I won't go any further yeah. than that it's and happened. embarrass myself, right? But can I suggest, <laughs> Daniel, would you open up the um, the flyer <clears throat> on the website? And you might open up the, just to get an idea on that side of it, right? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and this the, is just uh, the, I have it on my screen on it. Just again, um, it's just to show how we go through the programming in the and the application side, <laughs> if you wouldn't mind, right? And I don't know whether this is the whether you've an equivalent one, Michael, on the um, Sibzi website. We're bringing through the link, um, the same as the, the one that's here with Daniel. Can I just go back to something Peter said? He mentioned the yeah, gentleman, yeah. which I haven't heard his name in a, in a while, was Owen Kenny. Um, I was part of the Hebe Kenny group in Galway, which is which was part of the J. Kenny, and Owen completed an archaeology degree when he was 93, 94, because he was bored. <laughs> but he was he was a tough character, <laughs> so he was, you know. Slide rule, the slide would rule yeah. around the cross and knuckles if you got it wrong. Never mind. <laughs> and I'm sure he's a tough taskmaster. Well. I agree. Mm -hmm. Or stand in the corner with the pneumonia machine copying its races, and you'd be <laughs> high as a kite for about an hour afterwards. So, thank God digital print came in and PDFs and BIM. So. Okay, well, you know, Michael, we probably lost half the attendees on that last few minutes. Slide rules and ammonia and dye lines and CPOs and all that <laughs> other stuff, right? And we're now we going with to the... back to standing desks today, right? From the old drawing boards. So it's quite interesting yeah. how the world is a circle. I think Ryan yeah. or Connor Jr., you mentioned that as well. But look, I, I you know, it's now just after half one. So the um Danny, I think you were thrown up on the screen there, the flyer, right? And I think it's probably useful to open this out because we want this to be a collaboration. So I don't know whether we've got anyone on the attendees wants to come in and give a spoke or anyone else wants to come in and make some comments, but but I think we've done a reasonably good job of introducing the program and hopefully whetting your appetite that we're here to help. And you're, you know, this is this is for free, effectively. You're going to get a value out of this, which you know, I have I have relationships going back 40 years of people I know and and some have been formal mentors, some have been informal mentors. They're relationships, it's networking. I think Ryan, you mentioned that comment in the YEN. This is about embarking on a career and you will have lots of people who will befriend you. I mean, I mean, Peter, you'll remember me well from, from the 80s and Dista Products in Liverpool with Jacobs when as a young engineer do, here with Ardmac, we were doing manufacturing in Ireland for, for a laminar flow unit going into a pharma plant in Liverpool. And, I got a huge education from Peter, who could have hammered me, but was I was very grateful for him giving me guidance on how to make the applications and the, how the drawings needed to be presented and the whole lot on it. It was a very successful collaboration because we worked together. Whereas you I was learning like too, soccer, Connor, I can, I can assure you. Yeah, but you could have been like a soccer referee and just said, no, 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 red card, red card, come back and tell me you get it right versus a rugby referee of giving me guidance on it. So <clears throat> I think, Daniel, you're showing the... The Asher one, so I'm going to hand back to you, but it might be worthwhile if we can, if there's anyone on the attendee side that wants to make a contribution, ask a question, share a story or whatever. Yes, yeah, so I, I know we've we've um, had a number of applications and expressions of interest come in so far, and I don't know if, if any of those uh, people who've already submitted an application are on the call today, but if you do want to ask a question, just feel free to type it into the questions box or you can raise your hand as well if you want to um, come off of mute and, and speak directly to any of our <coughs> mentors or panel. But um, while, I'm, while I'm waiting for that, I'll just uh, briefly go through the, the website, the application form. Um, so on the Ashley Ireland website, it's just ashleyireland.org forward slash mentorship. Um, there's uh, drop downs with information about uh, some of what you've seen today on the um, details of of the program and mentors and mentees and, and their profiles. Um, and then you've got a box for the application. Uh, it's just a Google form, which I've opened up here. Um, you're just asked to fill out some details on your, um, your background. Um, this can be used for both 
participants and mentors were, were using this as a, as a means of matching people with similar interests. Um, you just ask for your, your company name, current job title if you're if you are employed at the moment. Um, interest areas, uh, we've listed some, some common ones here. You're also free to type in uh, your own custom areas in the box. Um, as we said, we're planning to run some structured sessions uh, later in 2022, given some ideas for some of the topics uh, here that we may run, but again, open to people adding their own suggestions for what they might like to see uh, in the box provided as well. And then the main part that, that's going to take a little bit more thought is um, why you want to join the mentorship program. Um, and the reason we ask this is, is just to understand your motivation for, for participating in this program um, and really just to help us match you with somebody that's that's equally aligned uh, and will you know will, will be able to do their best for you. Um, and I, I know from some of the applications we've already received, um, uh, there's been some fantastic responses and uh, it's clear that there's a that there's a um, enthusiasm and a, a a real interest in participating in a program like this um, and then the last boxes are just uh, data privacy and, and information sharing so uh, it's just a question of whether you're happy to share information with uh, with ASHRAE and uh, CIM uh, or sponsors so yeah we're this is this is the, the the entirety of the application form at the moment. Um, you can also, if you have any questions, um, obviously if you're on the call now, uh, speak up. But if you have any questions afterwards, because we'll be making this available as a recording on our website, just uh, send an email to mentorship at ashleyireland.org. Um, I suppose just another point, Dad, is these applications. While we do have a plan to kind of officially set up some of the structured sessions early next year, um, there's nothing to stop having, uh, you know, starting to match people up already. So as applications come in, we're, we're planning to assess those on a rolling basis um, and try to see who, you know, who who best to match people up with on the on the mentor panel. We've already got a number of mentor mentors that you've met on today's call. Um, there's a number of others that. Uh, I think either uh, there's a, maybe one or two more that weren't able to join today's session, um, but yeah, we'll be we'll be assessing these applications on a rolling basis. So, um, if you are interested, do do put in your application and um, and yeah, just uh, just get in touch if you have any questions. Um, just on the prize as well, um, just to the, the details of that, uh, what we're suggesting for that is that we're we're offering. Uh, return flights, five nights accommodation, and your conference fee paid for the, the ASHRAE conference in Toronto, which is a fantastic opportunity. Having been to a few of these conferences myself, they're um, they're 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 just massive, uh, with companies from all over the world represented there, um, and it's it's a fantastic opportunity to be able to to go to that, especially as a, a young engineer. I think you'd be I think many people would be hard pushed to convince your employer to shell out two grand to send you to uh, yeah. Toronto uh, just after joining a company. So, um, yeah, uh, really, I, I would encourage everyone that's that's interested to sign up. Um, this is, uh, I suppose, we're we're starting at a later point than we normally would in in the year uh, in this inaugural launch of the program. Um, I think, as I said, we will have a, a rolling intake, but because this conference is coming up quite soon, I think we'll be we'll be looking to select individuals uh, probably towards the tail end of March or April to to be sent on this um, opportunity to, to travel to Toronto. So that's um, can I put my application up as a mentee, Daniel? No. Sorry, Gary's Gary's bag, can, I, Gary. can I be a mentee? <laughs> no, Gary and carrier's bags. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> But I'm sure, Daniel, there will be other um, prizes and incentives as part of the program as it grows organically over the next few years. So I think that's just just a starter for 10, as they would say, if you can remember back to University Challenge before most of you were born. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I, I see this as a, it's, a, it's a starting point on what will hopefully grow um, over the next couple of years. Um, and 
I've been really grateful to the engagement we've had with Sibsi and, and John Engineers Ireland as well, the, the Young Engineers uh, segment within Engineers Ireland. I, you know, I think mentorship is something that's not unique to, to building services. It's, uh, it's something that's relevant and of benefit to people in, in all aspects of their career. Um, there's a, I think it's more of a comment that's come in just on the questions. Um, uh, Tab uh, actually touches on the, the the diversity, I suppose, of the um, people who would be interested in the program. So, um, uh, just a comment on the that this person is currently in HVAC and building services, but has a background in civil engineering. Uh, I believe that I will gain a lot from the mentorship program, as will many other mentees, and look forward to the wonderful journey uh, here in Ireland. Um, and the panel of mentors are distinguished and have a vast wealth of experience. And just to say thank you for creating the opportunity. So um, thank you for that comment. Um, Daniel, if I can just add to that, we may find that we've got, as the mentees make their applications, we may not find a suitable mentor, but that then will allow us to go out and find a suitable mentor. So, so the list we have is not exhaustive. So it's really going to um, let's shake the tree and see what comes out over the next between now and the end of the year and see how we can match them up to make sense of it and I think uh, Ryan as you rightly pointed out you know as a young engineer get involved in YEA and, and or YEN and just just start your journey and then decide how you want to move forward as time goes on and join it when it suits so it's not something that's going to start and stop this is an initiative which will carry on for a long time to come and you can get on and get off the roundabout as it suits so this is just a starter at the moment so just uh, just just on. one point to make on that if i may and that's just on the age i know it's said on the, the slideshow 18 to, to 35 but there's no real restrictions on age and it's just really on, in terms of the the first part of your career really you know you mentioned a 93 year old graduate there earlier on and, and they'd be more than welcome on the scheme if, if they'd completed a, an engineering degree and as opposed to an archaeology one, whatever it was. But yeah. just to make that point that it, there's no age limit, if you're 36 and you, you think that you're you're too old for the scheme, it's not the case. It's, it, it, they're kind of more as a guideline, but again, I have colleagues and friends who have graduated um, older than that, and, and again, they're, they're, they're very welcome on board. Good so point. You've answered the next question that will come in, Ryan. Uh, there was a question there about the upper age limit and whether it was set in stone. So I think you've you've answered that question. Yeah. yeah. Well the done. age limit for, for being a part of y, YEA or YEN, as it's called in, in SIBSI, I think to be an official member of those groups, yeah, I think that's that's restricted as far as I know. But um, it's 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 but, loosely it's given an arbitrary figure. Thirty five is given, but. Uh, there's, there's members much much older than that. It, it, as I say, it really depends on where you are in your career. If you've graduated recently, irrespective of what age you are, you might feel that the Yang group is is more aligned with uh, where you're at. And, and then, as I say, you're 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 more than welcome to join. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. So we we've got um we're going to close up before before two o'clock. So. I, Again, um, if anyone does have any questions, uh, feel free to to drop them into the chat. Um, and if you wish, you can always follow up afterwards by by email. But um, just in the last couple of minutes, I don't know if anyone else wants to to add anything else to the discussion before before we close up uh, today's session. I think just want to reiterate again, best of luck to everybody. Uh, it's a great opportunity. Uh, grab it. And as Connor, Connor Senior, I would call him, said, like, you know, doors can be opened where you think they, they can't be opened. And I, I remember doing an interview 10 years ago, and um, I was trying to get a flashy slide together of, you know, building services and all this. And I was asked the question, you know, can you do, I asked the people, can you do a jigsaw? And they were looking back and I said, well, that's what building services is. Building services is all parts. It's like a big jigsaw. When you put it together, it works. And I think that's why Ryan said it and Paul said it. It's it's such a vast, vast industry and it's changing every day and every hour. So, you know, we don't know everything. Uh, we're always learning. So 
look, best luck to everybody and whatever we can do in SIBC. And um, I'm sure the same with Ashray, like just keep in touch with us. Best of luck. Yeah, good point. Thanks very much, Michael. Um, so if we don't have any more questions coming in, um, I guess we, we, we can close up unless anyone else wants to, to add any more, more points to the discussion. Um, we will make this uh, recording available on the, on the website hopefully later this, uh, this afternoon. Um, and yeah, the, the, the links, uh, the, the slides are obviously all available in the handouts and you'll, they'll be available later on the website as well. Um, I don't see anything else coming in, so unless anyone else has anything to add, um, I think we'll just... just... Just on that, Dan, if there's any more questions, the, the mentees can email myself at the mentorship um, email address. And yeah, don't be afraid to ask any questions, guys, and uh, get your applications in. Last comment I'd make is never look a gift horse in the mouth. This is free, okay? <laughs> oh, you're right, Connor, and said, like, this is, this is the lessons learned that people can learn all the hard lessons that we've learned along the, along the way and what mistakes not to make, <laughs> because we've all made them. Um, and we, I suppose, we learn from it, and that's that's what this is about. Young engineers to realise, look, you're never going to be perfect. It's never going to get everything right. But there's enough people here or someone to ring. Is if you do make a mistake, there's someone to talk to. It might not, it might be outside of your your current workplace. It's a confidential conversation. Just if you need to talk and talk out a problem, that's what we're here for. Yeah, and the bad news, of course, is you don't stop making your making mistakes the older you get. You just make different variations of probably the same mistake. Or bigger ones. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So I, I think maybe we might, you might finish up, Daniel, but I, again, I'd like to thank Paul and David and the sponsorship because I think this is a really, really important initiative to help young engineers figure out their way through the chicane of their career and choices as they make progress and just to stick out a helping hand. Yeah, and, and yeah, just to reiterate that, that uh, thank you to, to Paul and CIM and, and to all of the, the, the mentors. I, like I said, I think on the, um, at the beginning, I'd be, I'm just blown away by the amount of people that are, that are interested in, in offering their time, especially, you know, senior engineers and, uh, people at, at later stages in their career to offer their time to, to help younger engineers is, is fantastic. Um, so I'm delighted that we've had so many people sign up so so early on and, and express their willingness to participate in a program like this. Um, I do think it's a, as everyone has said, it's a fantastic opportunity. Um, you know, the, 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 the trip to Toronto is one thing, but I think the experience that you get from speaking to some of these uh, these these mentors is invaluable um, and is worth far more than the, the 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 trip to Toronto. But it's a nice it's a nice bonus. Yep. So um, thanks everyone for for your time today and thanks to all the the, the participants on the call as well. Um, yeah, that's I think that's it from us. So enjoy the rest of your afternoon um, and uh, thanks again. We'll see you again soon. Okay. Thanks, Bye everyone. Guys. Take care. Bye. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.